Olama gives you the simplest way to run open LLMs on your own hardware. You've got text-based LLMs, you've also got multimodal LLMs these days that can handle images, but there's also plenty of models out there these days that are specifically designed to help you with programming. And not only that, these open source models are also getting better and better at it, to the extent that it's becoming compelling to explore some of these models as a coding tool, if only as an alternative for those expensive subscriptions that tend to throttle you. That is why, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up Olama as an assistant for Python notebooks powered by Marimo. This way, you have an easy starting point to explore what these models are like. And while we're at it, we're also going to explore a new cloud offering from Olama as well. That's a pretty compelling offering in this whole setup. Now, in order to get started, I uh, will be assuming that you've downloaded Olama beforehand and that you have that locally. And what we're gonna do now is just start by looking at some of the models out there. When you open up the models page, then you get a list of models. By default, by the way, you get the models that are uh, the most popular. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna grab one of these Gemma models because in my experience, they are pretty good. And I'm gonna start by downloading the lightest model out there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit copy. And one thing to uh, remember is that it's great to have a very lightweight model. It's mostly because of the size. It's gonna save you a bunch of disk space and it also will run pretty quick on most devices. But one thing to always keep in the back of our minds is that lighter models do tend to be more constrained. Part of that is the fact that, you know, the lightweight model over here, that can only do text. But if I were to look at slightly heavier models, then we see that they do text and images as well. But we also see that they have a larger context and, you know, as a consequence, they also tend to be bigger in size. So you might need a beefier machine the heavier you go. But as a starting point, uh, starting out with a smaller model uh, tends to be a good idea. So, and from there, what I can do is I can go to the terminal and you should see that uh, the Olama command line utility is available for you. And the first command that you wanna run is the Olama pull command. You then give it the name of the model that you wanna download and that's it. It's now gonna pull this from the internet. I already downloaded this beforehand, but as far as configuration on the Olama side goes, this is it. This is all you gotta do. And now we have to configure Marimo such that it can talk to this model. And there we go, I just opened up Marimo. Next, what I gotta do is I gotta go to settings and there's two ways to do that. You can go to the cog over here and then go to user settings. My preferred option is never to use the mouse. So I will hit command K, that's gonna open up a command palette. And from there, if you type user settings, you can just hit enter and you're also gonna get here. When the settings are open, you're gonna see a bunch of tabs over here. The one we want right now is the AI tab. And then the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we are in this AI providers section. You're gonna see that Olama is already listed and you're also gonna see that we already have the base URL configured for you. If you're running Olama locally, then this is the URL that you gotta configure. If, however, you are running Olama on another server, maybe because it has a GPU or something like that, then you do wanna change this base URL. But for our intents and purposes, uh, if you're doing it locally, this is totally fine. And if you have this configured, we now have a Olama AI provider. And then the next step would be to also configure uh, the AI models that we are interested in. So you're gonna move on to the next section over here. You're gonna go to this Olama right there. There are a bunch of models that are already configured. Uh, let me turn them off because I won't be using these in this demo. Um, right now you can also see that no models are configured whatsoever, but I can go down here and add a model to a provider. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select Olama as the provider, then I have to provide a model name. And in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and type Gemma3 colon 1B. I'm gonna hit add. If I now go back to Olama over here, you can see that this model pops up. I can go ahead and activate it. And now in all sorts of menus inside of Marimo, you should be able to select that model from Olama that's running locally. We just configured our model and Marimo has three ways to interact with it. The first one would be to go to this chat sidebar over here. Then here you've got a selection menu. So you could also go with OpenAI, Anthropic or whatever you've got configured. In this case, I'm gonna go with the Olama model though. So there we go. We can see the Gemma 1B model is there. I'm just gonna go ahead and type, hey, and we should see a pretty quick response. There we go. Tell me a joke. And you know, it's a definitely a pretty quick, not the best joke, but fair enough. Uh, this is a way that you can communicate with this model. The next thing you can do is you can also uh, do it from a cell. So let's say you wanna make sure that the LLM makes a change to this one cell over here. Then you can type shift command E, and this is gonna open up a prompt that will only cause changes to happen to that one cell. Just like before, you do wanna make sure that you've selected the right model over here. Uh, but again, I could type, tell me a joke. And then we do see a result come back here that's also pretty quick. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is that this model is of course not the best model. So you can actually see that it's generating a couple of these artifacts. That is also why in a moment we're gonna go for a bigger model, but there's one more thing we can do with this model as far as Marimo is concerned. Again, I'm gonna go to the user settings and again, I'm gonna go to the AI section. 
But now what I'm doing is I'm also configuring this code completion bit. Uh, again, you have to set a provider. In this case, I'm gonna go for this Gemma one model as an auto completion model. And now if I were to start typing here, something like uh, def Fibonacci, then if you wait a second, you are actually gonna see an auto completion appear. And uh, let me go for this one. It's actually not done the worst job of it. It seems to actually generate the Fibonacci uh, function, but it also generated a bunch of artifacts that I wasn't actually interested in. So, okay, this is pretty cool, right? Like we have a model that's running locally and the fact that it's able to help me here is pretty nice, but we are noticing that for sure, this is a 1B model that is a lightweight model in the larger scheme of things. So next up, what we wanna do is maybe try a model that's a bit bigger. Now, one way of doing that is to just get a bigger model, download it and run that locally. But this might also be a nice moment to show this new cloud feature that uh, Olama has. If you go to the Olama website and then go to the model section, you can actually select this cloud tag over here. That's gonna make a subset of all the models that are also hosted on their cloud environment. So uh, let me just take GPT open source. And then you're gonna notice that the models that are listed here, you can download them locally if you have the required disk space, but you can also use their cloud service instead. So I'm just gonna grab this 20B model over here. Just like before, I'm gonna run Olama poll. And at this point, you do wanna pay a little bit of attention that you did copy the right model name and typically you wanna look for this dash cloud over here. This is gonna make sure that you're not gonna download the big model locally, but instead that you're gonna download a, I guess you could say proxy. This download was really, really quick. And also if you look at the size of the file, you can see that we didn't really download much. But if I were to look at all the models that we have locally though, by running Olama list, then we do see that, hey, there is this cloud model or at least a reference to it. And that means that I can refer to it from Marimo and then basically everything will just proxy through. So going back to Marimo now, again, going to the user settings, I'm gonna go to the AI model section over here, scroll down, add a new model, the one for Olama. And then I'm going to paste that new model in there. Again, the dash cloud is also a important bit. I'm also gonna manually verify that the model that I just added is indeed also active. And that means that I can also refer to it from different places. So I'm also gonna to go to the AI feature section over here. And for the auto completion model, I'm now going to refer to that 20B model that's hosted in the cloud. And now if I were to type def Fibonacci, then I do see a larger auto completion. And this one also looks a fair bit nicer. It's got a doc string and the implementation just from glancing at it also looks uh, fair enough. At the time of making this recording, the cloud service is currently in preview mode. So things might change a little. Also what's gonna happen with the pricing exactly, I'm pretty sure that's going to change in the long term. But at least for the short term, the thing that's really nice is that you can use this cloud environment to just try out a whole bunch of models. And then if you find a model that you like, then that can be a point where you can also think about maybe getting specific hardware for the model that you're interested in. And you know, the fact that you don't have to set up something else on the side, uh, that is definitely pretty cool. That said, although the cloud environment is definitely very nice, there's plenty of models that also perform pretty well, even if you're just running it locally. I've had a lot of good experience with the Gemma 3 models, partially because, you know, they're pretty good at the coding task, but also because they have pretty elaborate support for images as well. So even if you're not interested in using these LLMs locally for programming, you can also use them for other use cases. And the fact that you can run it on your own hardware, uh, that is definitely super sweet. It's been a while since we did an evaluation of these models. So I think pretty soon we are gonna see what models are pragmatic to run locally. We need to do a bit of a benchmark for that. And if there's any models that you think will be interesting for us to have a look at, uh, do definitely let us know. In short, Olama is really sweet. And if you wanna give these models a spin, just know that setting it up in Remo is really easy.